Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. The art of the exploit, the devious and deadly secret techniques of a mysterious underground Warcraft community that operates in the shadows. If you want to go down that bunny hole, and the fact that you're watching this video suggests you probably do, then what class will find you the most juicy carrots? It turns out every class has strengths and weaknesses, special abilities that mangle Blizzard's code in unique and exotic ways. In this video, I will be ranking the top 10 classes for game exploits. Because this is a broad overview of the classes, I will be using some footage from older videos. However, there is a lot of new content I recorded specifically. At number 10, we have the Priest. As a healer, the Priest enters this list mainly by virtue of the fact that, as a healer, terrain exploits, such as this one which require a Goblin Glider in Eye of the Storm, is almost impossible to kill without virtually the whole enemy team directly targeting the healer. And with the Priest spamming AoE heals in this position, the enemy is not going to be able to kill anything. For Shadow Priests, the abilities Psychic Link and to a lesser extent, Sphere of Insanity allow the player to duplicate a percentage of the damage from the abilities Mind Blast and Void Bolt onto targets affected by Shadow Word Pain. This creates the opportunity for an amazing exploit which does millions of damage. In fact, tens of millions for a Shadow Priest with excellent gear. I'll attack this PvP dummy here with Shadow Word Pain, and when I switch to Mind Blast on a low level dummy, the damage multiplier from attacking low level mobs does game breaking damage to the PvP dummy. This technique can be used in time walking dungeons, duels, world PvP, and other forms of content such as holiday dungeons and the Dark Moon Fair in certain battlegrounds. Generally speaking, this strategy involves using Shadow Word Pain on main targets and attacking critters with Mind Blast or Void Bolt, though there are more complex and powerful methods to achieve the same end result. The Priest also has the ability Leap of Faith, and this can be used to transport other players into inaccessible areas, for example to take flag carriers or other players out of melee range. The relatively new ability Shining Force gives the Priest a very powerful knockback, and this can be exploited in PvP when you die next to a flag capping area. Rather than res at the graveyard, return to your corpse and res when the enemy players are attempting to cap or take the flag near the edge of a sheer drop. This allows the priest to essentially dematerialize and kill every player in the vicinity potentially without any kind of comeback. We must all in earlier expansions, Mind Control was, for many exploiters, the single most important ability to possess, as the number of potential ways it could be abused became the stuff of legend. There were exploits to use Mind Control to take control of overpowered vehicles, transport players to hostile faction capitals, and glitch into off-world transportation modes and visit GM Island. Blizzard responded by eliminating most of the enemies but the ability occasionally throws up interesting situational opportunities, with certain controllable mobs capable of giving the player interesting and powerful buffs. In PvP, you can get situations like this one in the Horde Graveyard area of Twin Peaks, where the ability is absurdly overpowered. There's nothing a single player can do to stop the priest from hurling them off the cliff repeatedly, and even when multiple players res at once, the priest will often still end up on top. Finally, the class specific items that drop from the priest class order hall altar can be glitched. These are supposed to be usable only once a day. However, if you click on the altar but don't actually take the item, it will be stored in your mailbox indefinitely. You can then use multiples of these items, for example, here I'm using Vial of Dark Shadows and you can theoretically build an army of these monsters using this trick. The Death Knight has one of the most powerful and interesting game-breaking abilities in the whole game. Death Grip has a wide range of utilities for exploiters. 
There's a common misconception that death grip can't be used as a form of knockback to force players over the edge of a sheer drop, as say a Shaman's Thunderstorm could. In fact, it is very possible and extremely effective in PvP, as I'm going to demonstrate here. However, it requires some practice and good micromanagement of movement. The key to it is to grip players to a location where they will not immediately fall, but pull them onto an area of ground where they will briefly plant their feet, but then will be pulled downwards by gravity, a point of no return. These locations are difficult to target and quite small. It requires a lot of trial and error to execute perfectly. But when you can do it, it is game breaking, especially for Blood Spec, which has Death Grip on a very short CD. Eye of the Storm has a similar point of no return, that in fact is a lot easier to target than Arathi Base in Lumber Mill. It won't kill the targeted enemy player outright normally, but does a significant amount of fall damage and keeps the enemy player out of the central area for around 15 seconds. Again, notice the brief pause before the target falls down the rock face as they struggle to get back up unsuccessfully. It is this moment of stasis that indicates that you've pulled the target to the correct location. There are many other such locations, too many to list in this video, and likely some that I don't even know about that you can discover for yourself. If you watch the Tauren here, you'll notice that he manages to walk into the point of no return without any help from me. This quite often happens when you position yourself correctly, especially when attacked by warriors whose charge ability puts them in the exact same position that Death Grip would. Note that I'm focusing on using this technique to drop players into a body of water, and the reason for this is that water acts like a movement speed impairing ability, effectively taking the enemy out of play for the duration. This roof beam in Silver Shard Mines is a fantastic place to troll people. It's too far away. The following exploits are quite old yet still powerful techniques. The first method, known as entrapment, requires the Death Knight to use Death Grip to trap a player in an inescapable location, such as this stack of crates in the Alliance base in Twin Peaks. Most of these locations were fixed, but a few still survive in Legion. And the second trick I'm going to show you exploits the Death Knight's enhanced mount speed and their Path of Frost water walking ability in Stranded the Ancients. By leaving the attack ship at the start of the round and charging towards the shore, they can attack the enemy up to 40 seconds before the BG actually starts, when still protected by the preparation buff, effectively making the Death Knight invincible. Finally, this very old technique can still be used to devastating effect against ammo locks and beast mastery hunters. Watch the bear here as I grip it onto the top of this tree stump. Due to pet pathing limitations, the bear is stuck and unable to attack, taking away a significant amount of its master's DPS. Overall, while Death Grip is certainly one of the most fruitful sources of exploits in the entire game, the Death Knight class as a whole suffers from a lack of depth in terms of more or less everything else they can do, being excessively limited in particular by an almost complete lack of mobility, which is why I put the class quite low down on this list. The Monk has the potential to extend their base ability roll almost indefinitely with lag, as you can see here, traveling at 485% normal speed, faster than a flying mount, and this enables the player to farm instances almost instantaneously, making this the natural choice for gold farming exploiters. Though naturally, such a dramatic increase in movement speed is useful for more or less everything you can do in World of Warcraft. In the Broken Isles, you don't actually have to use lag manipulation or exploits to achieve the same effect. There's a class item, a class order hall item called 
tumble run brew, which allows you infinite charges to roll, making for extremely fast leveling from 100 to 110. The monk's transference ability allows them to exploit phase switches. For example, here in Strand of the Ancients, by placing my spirit on board the Alliance ship, in the second round of the battleground, you can use Transcendence Transfer to return to your spirit onto the now invisible Alliance ship, or at least it's invisible to everyone else, as are you, allowing you to attack or heal without restraint. There's a lot of similar tricks you can pull to this one with Monk Transference, and also Warlock Demonic Circle and Mage Displacement. The level 100 talent, Chi Orbit, accessible by Windwalkers, is passive and allows the Monk to farm AFK. You'll need an AFK macro, and essentially this will allow the player to farm gold, XP or other items with zero time investment. The monk can use a discovery of mine I call the Weapon Switch Glitch in PvP to enhance their DPS and healing. In PvP only, when you remove your artifact weapon and then put it straight back, your health pool temporarily increases above its normal level. In this case, from a normal 1056k HP to 1111k. The Touch of Death ability does damage equal to 50% of your health pool, so there is a damage increase from 528k to 555k, around 5%, and a significant DPS boost. The Druid features high on this list mainly due to its versatility, as the different spec options can cover literally almost any role. The synergy between Displacer Beast and Druid Flightform has attracted many members of the exploration community to the class, as the combination of these things can pass impassable barriers. I leveled a Druid for one reason, and one reason only. Ursul's Vortex, a talent which has sadly been restricted to Restoration Druids in Legion. Ursul's Vortex is devastating in PvP. As with the Death Knight's Death Grip, you can use it to target points of no return at the edge of a precipice, as I'm demonstrating here. It can also be used to entrap players in locations they cannot escape from. Many such locations have been fixed, but some survive to this day. This entrapment location in Warsong Gulch no longer works since players trapped in the vortex no longer pass through physical barriers. But this location in the flag room still works well, since you can just literally jump into the entrapment zone. The mage is a class I have always maimed, and it is always an excellent choice to exploit with, if only because its teleport ability allows for fast travel, making it a good different option. This amazing visual glitch I'm showing off here I learned from a guy called Gutech at Uncore.com, and I'll link to his post below. Essentially, you just complete the Arcane Mage artifact quests up to the point where you receive a quest outside the Nexus. Complete it and don't hand it in. This similar visual exploit requires you to use the Illusion spell near a priest using Spirit of Redemption. The Frost Mage Glacial Spike ability currently is bugged in a similar manner to the Shadow Priest's Psychic Link. The articles that store DPS for the spike itself can be glitched by switching from low level to high level targets, creating overpowered DPS. Icicles themselves can sometimes be used to preserve some of the power of temporary damage buffs, even when the damage buff does not survive outside its own. The mage ability spell steal has been the basis of many exploits, going back to Wrath of the Lich King, where the lone mage managed to solo the military quarter of Nax Ramos using spell stolen buffs. Here in the Storm Peaks in Valkyrian, Northrend, these Valkyrian Aspirant mobs have an ability which can be spell stolen and raises critical strike damage infinitely and critical strike itself. This type of buff can accelerate leveling dramatically and has certain other uses I won't go into publicly. The mage benefits significantly from terrain exploits as mages are extremely vulnerable when attacked at close range. 
given free reign to do damage when it's inaccessible from the ground, they can break the DPS meters. On this fire in Eye of the Storm, you can easily control the whole area around the flag very effectively. Finally, the abilities Blink and Shimmer can bypass all kinds of barriers, such as this portal in Arathi Basin, or this gated entrance to the mine in the Battle for Gilneas battleground. The Hunter is a class that used to be the king of terrain exploits until Glyph of Disengage disappeared, but the Hunter gained access to several new exploits in Legion, which arguably more than compensated. Interesting things can be done with the Survival Hunter's Harpoon ability, as I'm showing here to escape from the Throne of Tides instance. The Hunter's explosive shot has a unique property that follows from the fact that it can be remotely detonated and the coding was messed up. The shot can pass through walls and can be used to pull or kill mobs through all kinds of physical barriers. The most dramatic demonstration of which is here in Outguard Pinnacle where I can clear the instance in literally seconds. Several other classes can do this, such as the Frost Mage, which can attack through barriers with Frozen Orb, but Explosive Shot has a much longer range. The Hunter also has an ability to enable his pet to attack while invisible using their marksmanship or survival talent, Camouflage. When your pet dies, it can be brought back to life using Revive Pet and sent into battle without breaking Camouflage. Hunter pets can also be dosed with all kinds of dangerous substances to increase their DPS. For example, dunk your pet in this felt sludge and it will do up to 65% increased damage some of that coming from the cornered ability though it kills the pet after 10 stacks have built up so have heart of the phoenix ready to preserve damage increasing debuffs like this one simply dismiss the pet after it's been dosed and then recall it when you want to do some burst dps Killer Cobra, the level 100 talent, can be used and then switched to another talent in situations where talent switching is active, again allowing for increased DPS. Finally, the Stampede talent can glitch through walls in the same manner as Explosive Shot. It doesn't have the same range as Explosive Shot, but as an AoE talent with a longer duration, it can be used effectively to attack multiple enemies, such as I'm doing here in Alterac Valley. The Warlock is unique amongst range classes in being able to use Demolic Circle to port to inaccessible locations, and this makes it impossible to extract the Warlock without killing them using multiple ranged attacks and gives the Warlock freedom to roam a wide area while able to return to safety instantly. Jumping on this log in Warsaw Gulch, I control a wide area. Demonic Circle effectively increases the range of a terrain exploit and completely eliminates the effectiveness of countered strategies such as Death Grip or Shadow Step. Affliction Warlocks can exploit the Absolute Corruption talent by dotting multiple target dummies and benefiting from the regenerative soul leech shield. There's a guy called Warlock who published a video about using this method to win duels, which I'll link to below. But this technique doesn't just extend to duels. I discovered you could use it as a leveling aid with the toys Sturdy Lumpful and Turnip Punching Bag, which can be put down anywhere in the world, dotted with corruption and used for all extra shielding. The Love Fool is only available during the Love is in the Air event in February, but the Turnip Punching Bag is relatively simple to acquire from a quest in the Valley of the Four Winds in Pandaria.
Warlocks can fire curse bolts through walls. Just put down a demonic circle, cast the curse bolt, and spam the circle port at the end of the cast. You'll be ported and your curse bolt will go right through any physical barrier that's in the way. As with the monk's transference ability, demonic circle can be used to transport the player into different phases and inside buildings. For example, here in Strand of the Ancients, you can put down a demonic circle at the destroyed gate at the end of the first round, and then port inside the gate in the second round, allowing you to defuse bombs without being interrupted. The Rogue's Glyph of Disguise ability allows the player to transform into most NPCs in the game, even Sylvanas here. And this is enormous fun, and historically has been used to game-breaking effect in many situations, though currently the nerfs to transformations in instance PvP have limited what you can do with it greatly. Also, many of the larger and more interesting mobs can no longer be pickpocketed. So it's unclear what this previously game-breaking ability's potential will be in the future. A special mention should be made here of the Outlaw Rogue's Bribe ability, which is very overpowered, allowing the Rogue to effectively have an NPC pet. And that has a very long CD, but it can be reset to nothing using the Proving Counts technique I've mentioned many times in previous videos. If I was to demonstrate how to do this in this video, then the guys who look at my stuff for Blizzard would instantly fix it. But if you are curious, it isn't that difficult to work out from looking at my archive material. The Rogue's grappling hook can be used to get on all kinds of terrain that would normally be inaccessible, as I'm demonstrating here. Blizzard fixed almost all the stuff I'm showing here but they only fix this stuff. Uh, you'll discover you can use it to devastating effect elsewhere in other areas. And that in fact is a good general principle when looking at these exploits. Eventually most things I publish will get fixed, but the fix is often very crude and doesn't solve the fundamental problem. So the same technique will be usable in other different situations. The Shaman was my most recent class guide and overall the Shaman has the most potentially exploitable abilities of any class. The Gust of Wind talent is one of the best mobility talents in the game, allowing the Shaman to bypass obstacles and barriers altogether, or as elemental to unleash volleys of chain lightning without interruption, or waves of healing as restoration. The combination of class fantasy, mobility and AoE damage make for a very compelling case for a Maven Shaman, but it doesn't end there. The Thunderstorm ability can be talented and macro to be triggered remotely in locations such as Eye of the Storm and Arathi Base and Lumber Mill. DPS can be increased for Elemental Shaman when talent switching is active by summoning an Elemental, activating the Primal Elementalist talent and then changing to another talent in the tier. The increased DPS from Primal Elementalist persists throughout the life of the Elemental. The level 90 talent, Fury of Air, can be activated in the preparation phase of a battleground and will then work permanently for the player without costing any resources. This allows the player a permanent DPS increase and the ability to AFK farm indefinitely. Finally, if you've ever wondered what lies outside the boundaries of the game world, the Shaman's Far Side has been used since vanilla to explore hidden areas of the world. Because of a coding error that was never fixed, it can be cast and recast multiple times, and penetrates all physical barriers. And at number one, were you prepared? Legion's Bastard Child, the Demon Hunter, has become by far the most exploitable class in the game. It was almost as if Blizzard wanted people to feel like they were breaking the game. 
In fact, that was literally what Blizzard said. And I quote, We want players to feel like they're breaking the game. With the use of a freeze macro and some timing, Demon Hunters can literally escape the boundaries of every battleground and most PvE instances. Vengeance Demon Hunters can use Demonic Trample and Lag Induction to cap flags virtually at will. They can also use Infernal Strike to take flags out of bounds. And finally, they can hurl players off the edge of sheer drops or entrap them with abilities like Seizure of Chains. So, there's the list. If you liked it, why not subscribe? And if you loved it, why not join the evil geniuses we have in my super secret Patreon feed? Patreon donators get every exploit I come up with as soon as I discover it, which may be months before I release it publicly. Thanks for watching. This has been Archvelder.